Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Nashville. August 4th is primary election day. That's just two weeks away. In Davidson County, all early voting locations are now open. The major difference for this election cycle are the new districts that the state assembly drew up earlier this year. So you might be voting somewhere new this time, and you might be voting for someone representing a brand new district. Do not fret. We're bringing you a special Citizen Nashville to help you figure out where to vote and what your voting rights are. But first... Each week, we take time to read the comments so you don't have to. Yes, I am encouraging you to literally add us on Twitter at This Is Nashville, on Instagram at This Is Nashville underscore WPLN, and at WPLN News on Facebook. Joining me now with a look back at our past week is our digital lead, Anna Gallegos-Cannon. Hey, Anna. Hey, Khalil. I am Super grateful to be back in the studio right now because late last week I had a crash on I-65. So um, to all of our listeners who are tuning in on their car radio, uh, be safe out there on the roads. We are super glad and grateful to have you here with us. So, you know, it's that's not even the only car crash someone in our team has had in the past few weeks. Man, you know, we're all happy that you're safe and back in the studio, Anna. This really makes me think we should do a show about driving in Nashville. I mean, we have talked about doing a show about road rage, which has apparently become quite of an issue lately in Nashville. I've seen a little bit of it the past few weeks myself. And, you know, we've done a lot of shows recently about getting around our city by bus, by car, foot or wheelchair. True. And on that note, we are still receiving plenty of comments from listeners who are very invested in Nashville's infrastructure. Uh, Recently, I put together an Instagram reel recapping the city's lack of sidewalks. And one listener who goes by Neil Ryder wrote to us saying, quote, a public train transit system is sorely needed. It is truly the panacea for most of these problems. Yes, we need sidewalks and bike lanes, but we first need to get most of these unnecessary cars off the road. It will save parking space, congestion, and thus aid in pedestrian and bike safety. Hmm. A former guest of ours also chimed in on this on Twitter. Uh, M. Simone Boyd, she pointed out that, quote, kids walk in ditches on Cass Street and around blind curves in Athens Way to get to John Early Middle School in North Nashville. Wow, that's really dangerous. Yeah. You know, while we're on the topic of city issues, apparently we owe an apology to a former guest and self-proclaimed Metro government obsessive Nicole Williams. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) Nicole tweeted at us saying, apparently council uh, member at large Berkeley Allen has been on This Is Nashville more than once. And I, for one, am deeply offended that I haven't been invited back. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Nicole was a great guest on our show about the Metro budget. We got your back, Nicole. Yeah, we got you, Nicole. And don't worry, as long as we continue talking about what's up with the Metro Council, we will definitely have a seat for you in our studio again. But until then, we actually have a treat for our listeners. Really? I love a treat. So during yesterday's episode about birds, one of our guests was Keith Peluso, the former park ranger turned bird watching TikToker. He goes on Keith. Uh, he goes by Ranger Keith on TikTok. And we ran out of time before we had a chance to ask him to see him to seeing some of his favorite bird calls for us. Mm. So after the show, uh, Ranger Keith sent us an audio cheat sheet on how to identify birds you'll commonly see around Tennessee. Okay. We're going to start with our resident birds first, our birds that are here year round. And I promise once you learn about 10 or 12 of those resident birds that uh, kind of make up the background noise, uh, anything you don't know will stand out and you can kind of zero in on that. The first one I'm going to talk about is one that you should be hearing year round. And they're a really interesting bird because they make a variety of different calls. Um, It's the Carolina chickadee. This is one we have through uh, all of Tennessee. They get their name from their chickadee dee 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 call that they make. Uh, That's a call that they use to tell each other about potential threats in the area. So it's an alarm call most of the time. Uh, If the potential threat is a lot more dangerous, like an eastern screech owl or something like that, they will add more Ds to the end to tell everybody, hey, that's really dangerous. So they see an eastern screech owl, it will be like chickadee dee 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 But if it's not as dangerous, it'll be more like chickadee dee dee. This is that call right here.
They also make a variety of other different calls, meaning different things. They have a, a song that I use, the mnemonic device of Batu Bitert, and this is their breeding song. The next bird we're going to talk about is a northern cardinal, and the mnemonic device that I use to remember this one is cheers, 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 drink, 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 drink. That's kind of one that I just made up on my own because I thought it was funny. This is that call. The next one we're going to talk about is an Eastern Phoebe, and that's an easy one to remember because it says its own name. We always remember Phoebe, Phoebe. It's a very um, raspy call, so this is that call. These are easy to find on woodland edges, wherever uh, when you see them, you'll you'll see their tail bobbing. Another one that'll be along a woodland edge is an eastern towhee, and these are beautiful birds. They'll be hanging out on the ground, flipping over leaves, looking for bugs and stuff. And they also say their own name in a way, but the main mnemonic device I use to remember these is drink your tea. <laughs> nice. I definitely have heard some of those, particularly when my cats are, let's say, patrolling the backyard. Okay, so there was another thing from that birds episode. Yes, there's the case of the missing Purple Martins. Our producer, Tasha A.F. Lemley, went on a sun, sun, sunset stroll with a local bird biologist to find where the Purple Martins are roosting now that the trees outside of the symphony have been taken down. They found them out near Jefferson Street Bridge one night, but it seems they didn't return. Yeah. So, listeners, we're really invested right now. If you have seen Purple Martins roosting in a tree near you, let us know. Uh, apparently, they look like a tornado as they land for the night, so they're really hard to miss. And heads up, it usually happens between 8 and 9 p.m. So if you see them, you know, throw us a tweet our way at This Is Nashville. I love a good mystery. Thanks to our digital lead, Anna Gallegos Cannon, for this roundup. Anna, we'll see you soon. Of course, and our listeners know where to find me online. Don't forget to add us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Let's keep the comments coming. Also, fill out our community survey. It lets us know what topics you want us to cover at thisisnashville.org. It's super easy and quick, and it helps us produce shows with your needs and interests in mind. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll bring you a Citizen Nashville episode to help you learn about your voting rights, your polling locations, and how the newly drawn districts may affect you. There is still time to send us your questions or concerns about the primaries. Tweet us at This Is Nashville. We'll be right back. Funding for This Is Nashville comes from you, our listeners, and Music City Prep Clinic, Nashville-based provider for prep and offering comprehensive sexual health services in an environment designed to be safe, professional, and shame-free. Learn more at musiccityprep.org. I'm Khalil A. Colonna, and this is Citizen Nashville. We've talked a lot here at WPLN News about how to serve you, our communities, better. So a few times a month, we're bringing you a special hour we're calling Citizen Nashville. Our goal is to answer your questions, round up resources for you, and make sure our leaders hear your needs loud and clear. Today, we're talking about voting. Yes, it's that time again. Primary Election Day is on August 4th, just two weeks away. Right now, all early voting locations are open in Davidson County. If you forgot... That's okay. We all have a lot on our minds these days. So just in case you don't know where your polling location is, what district you're in, or what your voting rights are, we've got you covered. Tweet us your questions at This Is Nashville and let us know what issues are top of mind for you as you head to the polls. We're joined now by Jeff Roberts of the Davidson County Election Commission. Jeff, welcome to This Is Nashville. Glad to be here. So happy to have you with us. So, you know, let's start with voter registration. How do people check to make sure that they're registered to vote? Probably the easiest way would be to uh, check online. You can go to GoVoteTN and look yourself up, and it will tell you uh, everything you need to know to be prepared to vote for this upcoming election. Okay, but what if I could swear I was registered, but it says I'm not? If you can swear you're registered or think you're registered, uh, the kind of the fallback fail-safe position on Election Day or during early voting 
we will let you vote a provisional ballot. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, it's the backup. So if there's any issue, you vote a provisional ballot and then we can research your situation after the fact. Now, is it too late to register for the upcoming August election? It's too late to register for the August election, but you're in good shape if you want to register for the November election. Okay, so if someone isn't registered for the primary, they can still register for the general election in November. That's correct. Okay. And your your last day to register for that November election is October the 11th. October the 11th. Mark that down on your calendars, everyone. So what is the process of registering online? It's pretty simple. Um, we use, uh, the state has a program that actually goes out and bounces against the Department of Homeland Security with the state, essentially your driver's license. And if you have a driver's license in Tennessee, you can register online. If you don't have a driver's license in Tennessee, let's say you just moved here from another state, mm -hmm. you can go to the Department of Homeland Security near you, get your new Tennessee driver's license, and at the same time, register to vote. All right. So what if someone meets all the eligibility criteria, but still gets denied or an error message using the online form? What do they do then? It's going to allow you to, if you have a printer, you can print off the voter registration application, simply fill it out and either bring it to us at our offices, or you can put, drop it in the mail. Okay. What about registering in person in person? Like in, in person is another great option. You can come, uh, any of our regular office hours. We're located on Murfreesboro Pike, across from, if you know, Monell's restaurant, we're across the street, or we have a satellite location down on 2nd Avenue at the Fulton campus. Now, what documentation? So either of those locations, you can come in person. Okay. Actually. So what documentation would I need if I come in person? You really don't need any documentation. You bring yourself and you fill it out. We have some simple questions. The main thing is, what is your residential address and what is your social security number? Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of people moving here at a pretty rapid rate. What advice would you give to a new Tennessee resident? Probably the, the biggest piece of advice I would give would be to, to check on Tennessee's actual voting laws because they may be different than the state that you moved from. Some states allow uh, same day voter registration or the deadline is 10 days before the election. In Tennessee, it's 30 days. Some states, you don't have to present anything when you show up to vote. In Tennessee, we require that you have a photo ID that's issued by either the state or the federal government. So if you've moved here from Wyoming, your Wyoming driver's license would not be sufficient. We would need a Tennessee driver's license or maybe your passport that was issued by the federal government. If I don't have one of those, what should I do? If you don't have one of those, you can, you will vote a provisional ballot, and then you have two days to bring that to us. So let's say you forgot your passport. That's what you were going to use, and you just left the house and forgot it. You can still vote. We will let you vote on a provisional ballot, and then you will bring your passport out to our office and your vote will count. If you're just tuning in, 
This is Citizen Nashville, and I'm your host, Khalil A. Colonna. We're rounding up everything you need to know about voting with Jeff Roberts from the Davidson County Election Commission. Tweet us your questions at This Is Nashville, and let us know what issues are top of mind for you as you head to the polls. All right, we've been talking about registering. Now let's talk about actually casting that ballot. We just went through the redistricting, and that means people might be in new congressional districts or have a new polling location, or both. First, Jeff, how many folks have seen a change in their polling location? Do you have an estimate? We're, we're estimating somewhere probably around 80 percent of the people are voting at a new location mm. now as compared to the November 2020 presidential election. OK, so if that was the last election you voted in, it would be a good idea to go to the Go Vote TN site again and just check to see if your polling location has changed. Now, you really only need to be concerned about that if you're voting on election day, because election day, you have to vote at your polling location. If you're voting early, you can vote at any of our 11 locations across Davidson County. How about mail-in ballots? Mail-in ballots, um, you've got a deadline of July the 28th. It's okay. the last day that you can request an absentee ballot. We will get it out to you just as quick as we can. We have to receive that absentee ballot through the mail by election day. A question. That's another one of those things that's a little bit different than other states. Okay. Some states, you have to have it by election day. Some states, it could be depending on what the postmark is, or they automatically say up to seven days after the election. It just depends on the state that you live in. So make sure to get those ballots in by election day. Check. That's correct. That's correct. Now, and because of the short time frame right now, what I would recommend, once you've got your ballot filled out and you're ready to drop it in the mail, at this, at this date, you might want to go ahead and take it to the post office at down on Broadway, go inside and actually hand it to a clerk. Mm -hmm. because that's where we have our post office box okay. and they will put it in the box for you. Go old school. So you with don't it. have to worry about the travel time between your mailbox at home, your local post office, then getting um, to the main post office. All right. All right. Dropping a few of those days there. Understood. Now, a question we got a while back is, if I'm a Republican, can I request the Democrat ballot or vice versa? You can request uh, the ballot that you think represents your, your needs as of today. I mean, you know as well as I do that um, nationally, people are, are changing the parties that they feel like they're affiliated with on, almost on a daily basis. So, you know, that could change each day as things happen. Uh, all you need to do is tell us which ballot do you prefer today. When you go vote, your poll, our poll officials will ask you when you check in, which ballot do you prefer today? Now, what would you say is the most confusing thing about voting in this primary? Probably the size of the ballot. Mm. There are a lot of things going on. You have both a state primary, a federal primary, and a metro general election all on the same ballot. So if you, re you request a Republican or Democratic ballot, if, you, if that's what you want, you will get included with that a general ballot. You do have the option of telling us that you just want the general ballot. But if you do, you only get those Metro general offices and the referendum questions. Okay. But I have a question though. This is a primary we have, but didn't we just have a primary? 
not too long ago. You, we, we did. You're correct. We had a primary in May, and that was for the Metro primary. So the candidates that were successful in that May primary, they are now on this ballot as general ele election candidates. So you've narrowed the field down from the May primary, and now you're in the more what I would describe as a head-to-head -head, um, election that's a general election. So for the state and federal, you will narrow that field down during this August election down to more head-to-head -head competition in November. Okay. So what are the top questions you have received so far this primary season? I think a couple uh, big questions. The main one, what do I need to bring with me in order to vote? And it's simple. The, that photo ID issued by the state or federal government, you don't need your voter registration card. That's more for just informational purposes for the voter. The second question we've received um, probably deals with the size of the ballot and just trying to understand how to get prepared so that when you show up to actually vote, um, you're you're ready to go. If you've this is the if you haven't looked at the ballot at all and you're trying to read everything that's on the ballot, you could be in the voting booth for 15 plus minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, if people have questions or concern, again, who should they contact? They they can contact our office directly at. 615-862-8800. Now, you may get transferred to another person depending on exactly what your question is about. Uh, we have some in-house experts on different areas of the election, but we will get back to you. Even if you leave a message, we will call you back. Now, on election day, if people show up and they're in line when the polling location closes, Will they still be allowed to vote? Yes. Uh, even so, election day, polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you're in line at 7 p.m. and you still have not gotten inside to vote, you will be allowed to vote. Uh, if, if there's a big line, we will actually put a poll official at the end of the line to designate everyone in front of me gets to vote, everyone behind me arrive too late. But the same thing applies for early voting. You know, the early voting sites close at different times, depending on what day it is. So we have on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they close at 7 p.m. On Wednesdays and Saturday, we close at 4.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. The other days, we close at 5.30 p.m. Okay. So... You know, any of those days, if you're in line at the time when that we close, you will be allowed to vote. Make sure that you get in line. Okay, so, you know, Jeff, what do you want to make sure anyone and everyone who intends to vote knows about the process? I would say that the probably the main thing that we want to pass along is that um, – in, in Davidson County and in Tennessee, the laws are put together in such a fashion to protect the integrity of the vote. If you, if you show up to vote, your vote will count if you're eligible to vote. So as long as you're a registered voter, and we can prove you're a registered voter, your vote will count. If there's some question about whether or not you're a registered voter at the time, we're going to let you vote a provisional ballot, and we're going to double check to make sure. Maybe there was some paperwork that we missed. Your vote will count if you should have been on our rolls on Election Day. He has a wealth of information and knowledge. That is Jeff Roberts from the Davidson County Election Commission. Jeff, thanks so much for being here and breaking down the process. Thanks for the invitation. 
We have to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk with a panel of voters to discuss how they are approaching this year's primary and what's important to them. We also want to hear what's important to you for the upcoming primary. Tweet us at This Is Nashville. We'll be right back. Khalil Colonna, and this is Citizen Nashville. Early voting is underway for this year's primary election, and the August 4th election is just two weeks away. Before the break, we were breaking down everything you need to know about voting in Davidson County. Now we want to hear from voters themselves. As you head to the polls, what issues are top of mind for you? Tweet us at This Is Nashville. I'd like to introduce my panels of voters now. We have Tequila Johnson from the Equity Alliance, Sally Carlson Bankford, Bancroft, pardon me, from Bellevue, and Joe Kwan from South Nashville, and Chris Chumley from Columbia. Thanks to you all for being here. Now, before the break, Jeff Roberts was breaking down everything folks need to know as they head out to vote in Davidson County. I think it's clear that information is not always super clear. Joe, you'll be voting for the first time this year. Is that right? Yeah, I just got uh, naturalized as a U.S. citizen uh, last year, so it'll be my first election cycle. What's your experience been like getting registered? It, my experience was great because I um, actually worked in kind of politics and civic engagement for a little bit prior to becoming a U.S. citizen. So I graduated law school and worked at a local uh, nonprofit where one of my coworkers was a civic uh, engagement coordinator. So he followed me to my naturalization ceremony and he waited for me with the voter registration in hand in the parking lot. So the day I got my citizenship, I was signed up as a voter. That is awesome. I love that. Now, Tequila, at, at the Equity Alliance, you help people register to vote and teach them about their voting rights. Why is it important to help people and give them this information? Absolutely. Um, if you were listening to what Jeff Roberts said, one of the things that I think stood out to me was just how difficult it is to vote in the state of Tennessee. Um, oftentimes we hear about this election, election integrity issue. Um, and what we've seen and what research has shown is that the issue is not in election integrity, the issue is access to elections. And so what we try to do is meet that gap that the state of Tennessee has created by making elections so difficult. And oftentimes, as you heard from the previous panelists, um, new citizens, more oppressed citizens, citizens in certain zip codes, do not have the information that was shared today and don't have access to it. So we feel that it's extremely important to make sure that that access and that information is available to, to all citizens because we know democracy is only great when we all have an opportunity to participate. Sally, how important is voting to you? It's very important. Um, I'm a grandmother and and a mother, and I've been voting my whole life. I don't think I've missed any election, whether it was for mayor or you know school board or whatever. I just think it's the basic requirement of being a citizen is to vote. What about you, Chris? Uh, I agree with that. I, I have voted in every election. I'm, I'm 25, so I haven't had a whole lot of elections to vote in, but I have never missed one. I believe it's it's very important to become informed and to go and uh, use your right to vote. Now, we've been asking the community to let us know what is important to them this election. A lot of the issues you might expect rose to the top. Abortion rights, guns, and local development just to name a few. Now, Joe, what issues are top of mind for you this election season? I think for me, you know, being a new voter, being newly uh, a citizen of the U.S., but having lived here and grown up in, in Nashville, uh, I have a lot of things on my mind. Uh, certainly being in South Nashville, traffic enforcement is a really big thing. Um, some common sense uh, gun control would be great because last uh Christmas Eve, there was a shooting in my apartment complex in the parking lot right next to my bedroom. So mm. 
those things are certainly top of mind at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to exercising my civic, civic rights for the first time. Okay. Joe, what is, I'm sorry, Chris, you know, you're in Murray County. What issues are driving you to the polls this primary election? So for the local issues, uh, like you had mentioned, local developments, uh, our growth in, in Murray County is unmatched. We are one of, if not the fasting growth counties uh, in the country. And we have all the issues that come along with that. We need more schools, uh, bigger schools, more educators. We need to fix our infrastructure and build more roads. And so uh, all of those issues that you can think of, we are having to deal with right now and the battle between impact fees or tax hikes uh, is a big talk. So uh, I would say that growth and everything that comes with it is driving people to the polls in Murray County. How closely have you been paying attention to the issues that are happening out there in Murray County? Locally, I've, I've been pretty involved. Um, I, I work for the city of Columbia and, and so I uh, we stay involved and we hear a, a lot about what's going on. And um, it's a it's a big deal down here. Everybody, everybody has an opinion on on what's going on and, and how it needs to be fixed. Sally, how about you? What's driving you to the polls? Right now, I'm concerned about the state of democracy at all levels of government. That would be Metro Nashville, the state of Tennessee, and the federal government. Um, right here in Nashville, a lot of times our Metro Council will pass um, laws that are meant to address needs that we have in Nashville and that fit the citizens of Nashville, and then the state legislature will override that. Um, for instance, there was something a few years back about um, banning plastic bags that you get at the grocery store. And the state legislature said, oh no, Nashville, you can't do that. And I find that very um, discouraging. And it, I think it's part of what contributes to people saying, what difference does it make if I vote? Because my vote doesn't matter. So for me, it's about democracy working at all levels and that those levels of government need to be respectful of each other. And instead of just doing power plays, they need to, um, you know, like I said, respect each other, work together, maybe compromise. But um, so I look for candidates. I'm going to the polls looking for candidates that have democracy as a value. Now, when you talk to your friends and neighbors, colleagues and associates, do they have similar feelings? Yes, I would say they do. Now, climate change, one listener wrote in and they said that climate change, the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, is going in the wrong direction. And I worry that it's going to make horribly consequential decisions that will push our region in the wrong direction, end quote. Tequilo, where does the environment fall in your mind in terms of how it will affect your vote? Um, I think when you, when you think about what is happening right now in this political climate, a lot of people um, are really starting to feel a lot of voter apathy. People want to see change. They want to see the things that they care about in their communities actually be reflected in policy. And when we don't see that happening, what we see is people just become very detached and apathetic. They feel like their vote doesn't matter. They feel like voting does not make an impact. And how do we respond as a state, as leaders, tells a lot about how, we, how much we value democracy. We see our state responding with making it harder for people to vote, which decreases um, the amount of people who actually have their voices heard. So I think the environment really has a strong impact on uh, voting, but I also want people to think beyond just the issues and how the issues are going to impact the vote because people, the issues have always been the issues. Now, because the issues are becoming more prevalent and they're broader, they're impacting more people, but there have been populations of people that have always been impacted by this. And so it's it's, I don't think that that is necessarily going to increase people's voter turnout. What I think it does is just drives more voter apathy. How do you combat voter apathy? 
with information, what we have to do is we have to, one, we have to push our state leaders to increase access to voting, to make it easier for people to vote. Um, and then we also have to make sure that people are educated on what on what's on the ballot so that when they get to the, bo the voting booth, they aren't intimidated. We know that people tend to disengage when they feel like they don't know something. Disengagement and apathy is usually um, a direct result of lack of information. So making sure that people have that information and also making sure people who are least likely to vote are most uh, are mostly directly impacted by the issues that result from a lack of uh, voter turnout are centered in the conversations. And that is not just always the people who are aware of what's going on, like myself, um, having these conversations, we really need to begin as a city, as a state to dig deeper and put our, our residents first and not just look at it as a, a, a way to hold on to power. Sally, how does what Tequila said resonate with you? I totally agree. And I'm so glad Tequila is on this call because I've been following the Equity Alliance since they started a few years back. And I am so impressed with their work. Now, Joe, what what's the race on the ballot that you'd say you're most interested in? Well, I, I, I let me um, take a step back and kind of address something that Tequila and Sally has mentioned as well mm -hmm. uh, before going into uh, the races that I'm looking at. I think uh, for me as well, you know, I'm, I'm 34 turning 35. I'm a licensed and practicing attorney. I've been a registered lobbyist. I've advocated for policy change at the state and federal levels. And even still, it's daunting for me mm -hmm. you know, as a first time voter, having never done this before, having you know, lived in these communities, but never having had the opportunity to vote. It's um, kind of hard and almost overwhelming to kind of think about, OK, you know, who are my candidates? What issues are most important for me and how am I might, you, know, you know, actually go into that voting booth and make that decision? Um, and I'm very thankful in that, I, like I mentioned before, I had great uh, professional connections and great friends who were able to guide me and who were able to kind of educate me along the way, like the Equity Alliance and the Tennessee Immigrant and Refugee Rights Coalition, where I worked previously. So um, those kind of that context has uh, provided a lot of education and guidance. So for me. Uh, some of the important races um, at the moment would be the Justin Jones uh, and the uh, Delisha uh, Porterfield uh, seat race, um, just because I think it's an interesting Democratic primary. Um, you're kind of you have two activist oriented candidates uh, that are kind of similar in background. Um, and I, I just think it's interesting where people are going to land on. Um, and also some of the school board races are, I think, interesting as well, coming out of COVID-19, well, not necessarily coming out, but, mm. you know, following on the heels of the school closures and whatnot. I'm uh, interested to see where, um, you know, the public kind of goes towards, uh, leaning towards uh, hold, either holding their school board members accountable and wanting some change or, you know, deciding that, they're happy with the status quo. If you're just tuning in, this is Citizen Nashville, and I'm your host, Kaliole Colonna. This hour is all about voting and the issues that are on top of mind for you this election season. Tweet us at this is Nashville. Now, we got a tweet from a listener, listener asking us to break down the four proposed charter amendments in Davidson County. Thanks for that tweet. We're going to break that down at the top of the hour on tomorrow's show, so tune in. Okay, I also wanted to mention more that Joe just mentioned, the school board races. Book bans, anti-LGBTQ legislation, critical race theory, they have all been hot-button issues for school boards over the past few years. Tequila, as a parent, how do you approach the school board election? Oh, the school board elections, um, as previous panelists have said are extremely important to me. And the reason being is, I mean, one, we have to look at these school board issues as not just being about education. Yes, it's about education, but education is also tied to many other things such as development. 
Um, and so for me as a parent, I really, really take that serious because I am raising a young Black girl um, in an uh, education district that has not always been beneficial to young Black women, young Black people of, or young people of color in general. And so I think that it's very impart- important that we really dig deep on what these uh, different candidates care about in terms of education and education issues. We need to look at their background, look at how involved they've been in education prior to running. Uh, What do they care about? What what do they do outside of just wanting to run for school board to help aid um, teachers and and students and children? So it is something that probably keeps me up a lot um, because we see from a like I said, it's bigger than just the school board. We see even from a state all the way down the city council level, just how much input Nashville residents aren't having in our education process. When you have the state uh, waiting in the wings, ready to preempt anything that we do as a city, what you essentially have is 96, 94 other counties making decisions on behalf of Nashville residents. And so it is one of the things where I, I really, really, really am encouraging all parents, no matter what you look like, no matter your party affiliation, to really get involved and really make sure that your voice is heard. I mean, we don't all have to agree, but I think it's important that we all have a voice. Now, Joe, you're not a parent, but do you think it's equally important for people who don't have children, may desire to have children one day, possibly may decide not to, to be involved and pay attention to school board elections? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm not a parent. I recently got married. Uh, well, not recently, this past October. And my wife and I, we are still in the you know processes of getting used to married life. Mm-hmm. And we ha- are um, not planning on having kids just yet. But, you know, I think schools and school boards um, are much more than just uh, a concern for parents. So, you know, schools are... It's not just about the education, and it's 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 not just about the children. It, it affects public safety. It affects you know health, public health, and it it certainly affects the environment and the uh, just public um, standard of living in the uh, in the community that those schools are. And it certainly affects you know my previous work. I, I used to work as a, a juvenile court lawyer. And you, we would see cycles of, you know, more juvenile justice issues when, you know, kids are out of school, when there's more uh, issues going on in certain schools and whatnot. So these, you know, concerns that m- most parents have for their kids' education, it really should be shared by everyone in the community because it affects all of us. Now, Chris, what are your concerns about schools and education in Murray County? Well, I'll tell you one thing that that we've done in Murray County that that does upset me. We have uh, now made it to where we have partisan school board elections. And to me, reading, writing, arithmetic are are not partisan issues. And to me, we already have enough government overreach as it is. And I do not want government in our schools uh, as little as possible. And so it should not matter whether you are a Republican or a Democrat. We should have a room full of individuals that represent the school board that wants what's best for our children. And so we have, uh, you know, Murray County is a very, very Republican area. And so we have a lot of Republicans now running on the school board election. And uh, I would say they, the majority of them, if not all of them, will win the election this this uh, August. And so I'm interested to see how this very Republican school board will handle our school system going forward. Um, they may fix issues. They may cause some issues. I'm not sure. But it just scares me to have partisan politics in the classrooms. Now, We have another comment we received, and it's a Nashville listener has a comment about our Republican leadership. Quote, they have been made it. They've made it a crime to be homeless. Their constant war on the cities and culture wars are making my family seriously consider leaving Tennessee after nearly 40 years of living and working here. End quote. 
you know, they're talking about the new law that makes it a felony for people to camp on local public property, such as parks. Is what's happening to our unhoused community in Nashville, is that an issue for anyone? Sally? Joe, is that an issue for you? Absolutely. Um, I, as mentioned before, I live in South Nashville. And, you know, in my community, you know, I, I go home getting off of I-24, off of Bell Road, and I see panhandlers on, on that area just pretty much all the time. And, I, I, you know, I... I don't know what the perfect policy solution is, but I think at a minimum, these people, you know, the most vulnerable of us need to be treated with respect and their circumstance and their situation shouldn't be criminalized. I think we certainly need, you know, the right kind of leadership that's focused on, uh, you know, helping people and and values and, and trying to lift people up and giving people um, opportunities rather than putting them in more jeopardy, you know, whether that's through criminalizing, you know, such situations that they cannot help um, and offering more resources. But other than that, I, I, I frankly don't really know how to approach that. You know, in the comment, the listener also mentioned this so-called war on cities, which touches kind of on the divide between rural and urban voters in Tennessee. Now, Tequila, you have gone out to rural parts of the state to register people to vote. Have you seen a divide when talking about the issues with people? Um, Absolutely. I mean, I think when we, I think conversations like this helps to, to bridge that divide. But I also think that we have to stop referring to rural voters, rural residents as the rural people and then the city people. We have to see them as our neighbors. Um, As unfortunate as redistricting and the splitting up of Nashville was, what it has done is it has forced us to go outside of our comfort zone, to go have real conversations with our neighbors and let them know that the same things that they're experiencing in rural Tennessee, we're also experiencing in some of our major cities. And so while that divide is there, I'm very hopeful that over the next few years, with just the conversations that we'll be able to have, we will be able to start to bridge that divide and really look at one another as not just, oh, this is the rural county that tends to vote for one party or another, but as Tennesseans that most of us all care about the same thing. And that is the the humanity of who we are as a people. But, you know, we all care about having good water, access to health care and safe um, and, and fully funded schools for our children. So I'm actually hopeful. But yes, Khalil, there is a divide. Chris, what's your take on that? Um, so to, to touch base on the the homeless issue, uh, Murray County, uh, I'm very, very proud of Murray County. Um, we do not really have many homeless people in Murray County. And I truly believe that that is because of the community that we have here. We have numerous organizations that are always very willing to help. There are lists of organizations that if you become homeless, you can call. And so um, we have an outpouring of love for each other in Murray County, I believe, no matter your race or your color or your political agenda. Uh, at the end of the day, Murray County can come together to take care of each other. And I'm very proud of that on the difference between county and city or rural versus urban. We do have that here, but it is not a very big issue uh, as pertaining to what I just said. We are able to come together very, very well here. All right. And I'm proud of that. We have a minute left, so it's real quick from each of you. I'd like to hear one last question, what you're looking for in a candidate that is asking for your vote. Sally, a couple seconds. What are you looking for? Chris, what are you looking for? I'm looking for personable, genuine individuals who care for their district, not political agendas. Tequila. I am looking for someone one who puts people over profits, people over politics, and people over. Oh, wow. We lost it, Tequila. I'm sorry about that. Joe, what are, we, what are you looking for? 
I'm looking for somebody that's actually open to hearing from their constituents and having plenty of engagement. I feel like there's a lot of uh, candidates that just aren't pulling their own weight. So I, I would love to see somebody that's really tied in with the community. Well, it would be good for the entire community to have the constituents talk to our panelists. I want to thank you all for coming onto the show and for letting us know how you feel. Many thanks to Tequila Johnson, Sally Carlson Bancroft, Joe Kwan, and Chris Chumley for being on the show today. We really, truly appreciate it. We want to thank everyone who tuned in this hour. Tomorrow, it's hot out, y'all. I mean, it's hot. That means the perfect weather for a cold treat. Ice cream, anyone? Tune in. This is Nashville is a production of WPLN News and Nashville Public Radio. Listen back at thisisnashville.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Our producers are Steve Harouche, Rose Gilbert, and Tasha A.F. Lemley. Our digital lead is Anna Gallegos Cannon. Michaela Elias is our technical director. Our executive producer is Andrea Tudhope. Doreen Chernecki is our intern. And the masterminds behind our theme music are LaRange and Namir Blake. Special thanks to Paige Flager. The conversation doesn't end here. Tweet us at This Is Nashville. Find us on Facebook and Instagram and tell us what you want from our show by filling out our quick survey online. This is Nashville. I'm Khalil Lake Alona. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Be good to each other and get out there and vote.